Hi guys, David Guido here from La Liga Lowdown. We are at Old Trafford. It's just over there. Uh, we are here for Manchester United against Valencia in the Champions League second round of group games, uh, which means it's a fantastic opportunity to catch up with this legend here. It's that man, Dave, of course, Manchester United fan, but you might know him from his YouTube channel and Twitter and all sorts of other things. Uh, and this man knows United like no one else. Um, so, Dave, first of all, I mean, it's just a personal question, really. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling? Terrible. <laughs> yeah, not good at the moment. A little bit, um, you know, questioning life. Okay. And football formations and tactics and everything. Are you sort of bearing down to the deepest recesses of your soul? I really am. Yeah. I'm, I'm, soul, I'm soul searching at the moment to find out the solutions to the problems. Okay. Well, I mean, solutions need to be found in Sharpish, otherwise there may be a change of manager yeah, on the way. We'll, so. we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's talk about, about the game, though. And uh, for Manchester United, when Valencia were drawn in the group, along with Juventus Young Boys, what, what was your reaction to that particular opponent? It was exciting. Again, Valencia are a team of my childhood. You know, the team of the early 2000s, mid 2000s, that always would put good sides out, and sides with mystique. Kelly Gonzalez, Pablo Emar, and all the guys that I grew up with yeah. and used to play like the old foot managers with. And you'd always buy Valencia players because they always used to be good. Yeah, they were one of those teams, as you say, that in the early 2000s and sort of tail end of the 90s, so Mendieta mm. into the Benitez era, yeah. so you had Hector Cooper, even a bit of Claudio Ranieri mm. before. But I think everyone seemed to have some sort of affinity with. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's reaching two Champions League finals and, and winning neither that, that gets people kind of on your side a little bit bizarre. I think they were one of the first hipster teams. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, maybe. That's yeah. generally it. Yeah. And so obviously we've got Valencia back in the Champions League and they come to Old Trafford on the back of that defeat at home to Juventus, um, a pretty poor performance from Valencia. But they're playing on that Manchester United team who seem a little bit in disarray. I think that's putting it mildly. And um, what's your what's your read on things at the moment? I think it's interesting there's a, a few things wrong with, uh, with management, with players, and there's no collective, there's no togetherness at the moment. And that's the, the frustrating thing that United under Ferguson always built that collective environment that it's us, we're a team, we're all supporting each other. We've got players that can come in like a Fletcher, like a you know, an O'Shea that will come in and do a job. And they don't have players like that right now, and it feels mm. like some players don't want the current management, other players do, and it feels like there's a split between certain players and the performances we've seen recently. You know, the Carabao Cup against Derby, atrocious. You know, getting outplayed at Old Trafford by a team in the Championship, and then you go to West Ham and you play five at the back, three in midfield, two up front, don't pressure the ball, very basic in the final third. You, you look at it and you think, what is this Manchester United team? This isn't a United team that I go down and I get excited to watch mm. because I don't know what's going to come. Yeah. I could be excited about the football they play. It could be some unbelievable football that we've seen under Mourinho. But you've also had that turgid, one-dimensional stuff to throw into West Ham. Mm. Have you lost your identity? Have you lost your soul? What it really is to be Manchester United at this club just here? I think we've lost a, uh, a style. Mm -hmm. I think I think under, when Ferguson went, there was more responsibility to be put on what is the style of Manchester United. Is it playing a 4-4-2 with wingers? Is it playing a possession game? Is it playing a modern Gagan pressing game? Is it a you know a Pep Guardiola passing around the back? And that identity has, has been missing. Mm. And you look at the we go from David Moyes to Louis Van Gaal to Mourinho. That's three separate management management styles and three def different football styles and three different coaching styles and three different like dealing with personalities challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the problem. It's been too scattergun. Yeah. Where is a director of football, a European model, should have been what United went for. Okay. They should have gone with a you know director of football, head coach. And then the director of football is going to be there for, for seven, eight years, ten years. Mm. A head coach may come and go. Yeah. You've always got that right ideology. You've got right the strategy. Pathway and a strategy. Yeah. Okay. What, what, what about the, the game that we've got tonight? Between Manchester United and Valencia, you've got a Valencia who have a very, very set strategy, a very, very set philosophy under Marcelino. 4-4-2, mm. come what may, very, very organised, very, very hard working. How does Manchester United at the moment match up to that kind of challenge? I think the big thing with Valencia, I think from when I've watched them in the 4-4-2, it's if teams get in between those two lines, the defence and the midfield, if they get players in there uh, you know, and, and break Valencia's shape, that's where I've seen the joy there. So you're looking at if there's going to be a midfield three of, let's say, Matic, Fred and Pogba, like playing against young boys. If they can use the way, you know, use the rotation in midfield to spin Pogba between the lines, Fred drops next to Matic, mm. and you have that playmaking base for Pogba ahead and to receive in between the lines, that's where I think United can progress and United can do some good stuff against Valencia. Mm. I think the problems there may be the other way around if United can't get into those areas and Valencia restrict an encounter yeah. behind United's fullbacks. Yeah. And then United's midfield isn't properly secure in front of those two back centre halves. And you pull Smalling out wide, you pull Lindelof out wide, you get a lot of joy. Yeah. So yeah. that's the kind of thing. It's can United break down a very solid 4 4 2? And yeah. it's a 4 4 2 that I really like. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the, the, the middle four, um, you've got Gonzalo Guedes on the left hand side, you've got 
Jeffrey Kondogbia and then Danny Badejo and, and also Carlos Soler on the, on the right hand side it feels very balanced because you know you've got one winger who is an out and out winger who loves to run who loves to really create havoc and the other one Carlos Soler perhaps arguably uh, one of the most intelligent young footballers there is in Europe right now would you agree? Yeah 100% I think he's likened him to Koke or maybe a Saul that tactically knows what they're doing mm. tactically is switched on I think in the modern day where tactics and different systems of formations and styles are so important having someone like that to balance out the Valencia team and allow, allow the left winger to bomb on and attack and arguably join the front three you know I liken it a little bit to maybe you know Brazil back in the day that 3-4-3 where they are inched on the right on the right wing and it was blended with Pelé or even the World Cup with France where you've got Pogba, Matuidi and Kante mm. on that sort of left side and then you've got uh, Mbappe flying. That's a similar shape that I, I envision Valencia to go and you need players like Matuidi, you need players like um, Carlos Soler that can, that can sort of hold that shape and hold that position and allow everything else to work. It was a player who not so long ago was linked with uh, Manchester United uh, fee of around £25 million. His uh, release clause is now £80 million, pounds, or £80 million. Euros. <laughs> so, yeah, tripled uh, the, his worth. And, and the thing is that I think that he will be worth more in the future. There's no doubt about that. Um, now, in terms of uh, Valencia going forward, so you've got talked about Gerdes, we've also talked about Rodrigo and probably Kevin Gamero alongside him. Uh, again, you're talking about playing between the lines. These two, you know, are uh, such a mobile strike force, aren't they? So how do the likes of Smalling and Lindelof cope with that? I think that's all about creating their back four as soon as United can. About Delo and Luke Shaw protecting Smalling and Lindelof. If you pull those two, as I mentioned before, out wide or into space, and you, you know you'll get past them. Mm. You can outthink them if you pull them out that natural centre half position. And that would be something I would be doing for Valencia, whether it be Rodrigo dropping off into that space and you know operating nearly as a false nine and, and providing a little bit of you know gusto of, of driving on the ball and getting shots where like he likes to do. That's the issue for me for United. If they don't get back, make their back a four, or they have that balance and attack where if one one of the fullbacks goes, the other one holds. So you have that like lopsided back three. That is monumentally important because mm. if they go two v two, there's only going to be one winner, and that's Valencia in that situation. What about trying to expose Valencia? You've got Jose Gaya, probably I would imagine Gabriel over Jason Murillo, then it's Hill Garay, and then you've got Christian Pacini on the right-hand side, who's a different kind of defender anyway. He does tend to get a bit further forward. I suppose when you look at the flanks, that makes a lot of sense. Jose Gaya will probably just be a little bit more conservative behind Gilles, whereas you might see Pacini overlap Soler, and Soler will know that therefore he has to cover the space. But what do you think in terms of United's personnel? Who would you choose to best expose that back for? I think it's an interesting one. I think United are quite left-sided when they attack, or when they've attacked well under Mourinho, under Might Vangal. suit you then that Pacini's the way he is. It, might, it really might. And I think with having one matter in the team is vitally important. One matter makes United tick at home. It's really interesting where you take a player like one matter out that sometimes you say, oh, what's one matter done today? And he's been linking everything. Little small short passes, drifting across the lines, creating those overloads. And mm. He starts on the right, but he'll be in at number 10. He'll be on the left-hand side. Mm. And that overload to you know on the Valencia right back with Marcus Rashford with maybe Pogba drifting over there with Luke Shaw on the overlap is where United could exploit them also with one matter in between the lines as we mentioned before another player to get in there you know be it him starting from that wide position then coming inside receiving maybe laying it to Pogba and then combining with Lukaku and I think that short sort of passing on the right hand side combined with the width of Marcus Rashford Swing it to the back post for Lukaku could be where United really win this game I think the big thing with Lukaku he's done really well in the Champions League when he's drifted onto the back, you think the games last season, uh, CSK Moscow did a very good job on their uh, right back, um, sorry, their left back, and then that could be the same. crossing from that left hand side for United onto the right back, hanging up from Lukaku, allowing him to, to win that physical aerial duel with Gaia. That is how I would be approaching this as Manchester United. We talk about often games being decided in the, in the middle of the park. I think in, in this uh, case, I do really believe, as far as Valencia are concerned, that they are so reliant on the access of uh, Kudogbi and Parejo. Um, how important is it that you unsettle that? Because Parejo is, I suppose, the matter figure in the Valencia team because he does knit play together. He, he is very good at just finding that, that short pass just yep. to relieve pressure. And Kudogbi is the man who can just grab the, the game by the scruff of the neck. So who do you think is the person that can maybe just puncture that into it? I think that's a really interesting one. So I watched Kondogbia play for Monaco. They beat Arsenal 3-1. Okay. Berbatov scored, Anthony Martial scored. Really impressed me. Really good player in central midfield. At that point, Fabinho was playing centre-half in that game. He was also you know, a key performer there. But I think Kondogbia versus Fred mm. is going to be a really interesting battle. Yeah, yeah. They're two quite similar players when they defend. 
they both jump out, they'll press, they'll be aggressive, they're quite, uh, yeah, I think Kagob is a little bit leggy when he defends, I think Fred's quite like that as well, even though he's a lot shorter in stature, but that'll be a really good battle um, in between those two, or alternatively if Mourinho wants to flip it round, dealing with Matic versus Kondogbia and then having Fred's energy, dealing with Preho when he gets on the ball, could be a good option, so I think that's another really interesting one, the two central midfielders and how they engage each other with United and Valencia, mm. given that Pogba is going to be playing behind them. Yeah. And that's what I'd like Pogba to do, not to engage in that midfield battle. Yeah, yeah. Don't engage with him, Kondogbia, because Kondogbia will... The thing with Pogba is he drops deep sometimes and he shouldn't do, and he takes too many touches, he tries to dribble out in, in his own half. If he does that against Kondogbia, Kondogbia's going to nick it and, he'll score, and Valencia will score a goal. Yeah, yeah. Simple as that. Pogba, as far away from defensive midfield as possible, Matic, Fred, bit, base, Maybe if you get pressure from Valencia, simple little one-two, bypass some Pogba in between the lines, simple mm, as that. Okay. Um, we touched on this a little bit earlier on, just the sort of mood music around Old Trafford. Uh, without wanting to sort of drill too deep into the he said, she said, because who knows what was said. Um, and lots of things are being said, uh, both inside and outside the camp. But, but how do you feel that United players are looking towards this game, as opposed to, say, West Ham in the Premier League? I think in the, they've had a little bit of uh, respite in Europe in recent years where sometimes they, they free themselves up or they don't feel the same pressure as they do in the Premier League but you take the performance against West Ham it felt like some players were playing for the manager some players were nowhere near their level of performance there was players that were playing together in certain positions that weren't working together as a unit when you need players in a 3-5-2 to work very much as units mm. because you can break it down two wing backs, three centre midfielders and two strikers and three centre halves if one of those three units are not working together, you have an issue. Yeah. With United, there was more than one of those units not working. Yeah. And that is like personality splits that aren't needed. Yeah. Andy Cole and Teddy Sheridan used to hate each other. They won the Champions League together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personality has to be out of a team team sport. And, you know, that's the thing United need to focus on is that team mentality. Mm. Players like Scott McTominay that have been lambasted for their performance playing out of position in a 3 5 2. He, gives, he cares, and that's what United need, players that care at the moment. Mm. The likes of Marcus Rashford, who was fantastic when he came on. The likes of Jess Lingard, obviously out injured today. But those types of players, through the United Academy, that can play for the, that will remind the lads they're playing for the shirt. And Ashley Young, a player that's not really you know, renowned and is, is a great player, is injured today, but him in the dressing room today could be quite important. Mm. But it's that collective attitude that needs to be brought back. You know, enough of these split camp or whatever it is. Mm -hmm doesn't work for a football club. Well, what about the various scenarios that we could see as a result of win, lose or draw? And not just simply the result, but the nature of the performance that we see at Old Trafford today. What, what do you think might potentially happen? Well, I think there's certain places are reporting certain things, certain places are other. So on one side, you've got Mourinho was supposed to be sacked on Saturday for the loss. They're also now saying that this is the day that he's going to get sacked. There's other reports that you take from Ed Woodward through certain outlets that you know that is a bit of a mouthpiece for him that says he's in charge, he makes the calls, and you read further back into that that he doesn't want to change a manager in season. Why did Van Gaal stay as long as he did in the last season? The football was as bad as it is right now. Probably should have booted him in January. You know, he went on to win an FA Cup. Thank you, thanks for that, for Louis. But at the same time, you could have made that call earlier. Mm -hmm. So if you're reading those two angles, either you've got him getting sacked after this game, or he's not getting sacked till the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Either one could be very true. I mean, you've got a game away at Chelsea before then. You've got a game at home to Juventus and then before City, then. I think, as well, and then City. So I guess if there is a, a sort of Damocles yeah. that's uh, hanging, it's it's probably going to be there for a little while. Yeah, yeah regardless of what happens tonight. What, what sort of game are we expecting? What sort of spectacle? I hope it'll be good. I hope, they, I hope United grab an early goal, allow Valencia onto them, and I think we'll see a bit of a basketball game. Yeah. So I, I just want to watch some good football again. Yeah. And it's too much turgid, breaking teams down. But if I was a way manager and I came to Old Trafford, I'd be sitting 10 men behind the ball, I'd be making you making you break me down, and I'd also be counting tap down the place for mm. two strikers. So Valencia arguably have the perfect system and shape no. to cause United an infinite amount of problems today. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a sto story, right? You know, it's a story teams here. You know, we've got two teams that have done well in the Champions yeah. League before. Uh, of course, United have won it a number of times, and Valencia got to two finals before. Uh, so hopefully it will have at least that sort of real tactical the interest mm -hmm. and, and, and entertainment spectacle as well. We've got some proper players on the pitch as well. We've exactly. talked about, about Guinness, we've talked about Pogba, we've talked about you know, that those, that those brilliant leading lights. Let's hope that we actually get the sort of spectacle. We just want there. a good game of football. Yeah. That's it. That's all we're asking for, guys. Come on. Um, Dave, just tell us uh, a little bit about what you're up to right now, where we can find you. Yeah, just on YouTube, Sat Man Dave. Go check it out. Okay. Follow on Instagram, Twitter, everything the same. Sat Man Dave. Just Google it. Just Google it, it's as simple as that. David, it's been an absolute pleasure. Brilliant. Thank you so much indeed. Listen, I say this. Good game, in, in, good yeah, exactly. Good May the best man win. But if you do beat us, 
don't destroy us. Okay. We can't handle that. I don't know whether we can handle being destroyed. Either, so <laughs> maybe a close game, like a two-one or a one-nil. Yeah, or a three -two. I've said two-two. I've said two-two. I think actually, you know, I, we, we might sign for that. We might yeah, sign yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Cheers, buddy. Appreciate it.